Holy guacamole, those two days went so quickly, and here we are. It's funny because I'm wearing the same outfit because I'm recording this the same day, but I'm going to pretend it's Wednesday now. All right, so we're going to talk about elements next. So elements are something that can't be broken down into anything simpler. It's the simplest form that they can be in. Um, they're all on the periodic table of elements. I'm sure you've heard of it. I'm also going to be, when we do some reading about elements, I'm going to put up, for those people who are online, I'm going to put up a interesting chart that shows you how the different elements are used everywhere. So it's super cool. It actually helps my brain a lot because a lot of times I have a hard time kind of perceiving where we would use all these different things, but it does a great job of breaking it down. And it's like, oh, but we actually need this element in motors or something like that. So I will post that when we get to the reading. It's pretty cool. So if you're really into the periodic table of elements, we're going to talk more about it soon. All right. Metals. We're going to do a little bit of work with metal. Um, metals have to have luster, conductivity, and flexibility in order for it to be classified as a metal. So basically, you can determine what type of metal it is based on these three things. So luster, conductivity, and flexibility. It's going to come up again. Don't forget it. All right, atoms, basically it's the smallest form of the element. So it's what the element is made up of. Simple as that. We'll get more into it when we get into the reading. Um, nucleus, as you can see, I have a weird happy face that's right there. Um, that means it's L to J. And a nucleus is just your center of the atom. We're not going to get into the structure of atoms, but this will be something you will see again, trust me. So no, the nucleus is the center of the atom. Um, so molecules are basically when the atoms join together, they create different things. So you can think of something like H2O. Hmm, where have I heard H2O before? Oh yeah, water, of course. So basically what it is, is hydrogen and then two oxygen molecules. And so you know that, oh wait, I said that backwards. I lied. It's two hydrogen, H2O. So it's two hydrogen um, molecules attached to one oxygen molecule. And I'm going to show you real quick how it looks. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this because I'm using kind of a crazy pen. Okay. So as you can see, I have H2O, and then we have our two right there. It goes a little bit underneath. So we can think of something like math, where you put, usually we have our numbers up above. Does anyone know what those are called? I'm sure you yelled it out at your computer, because that's what I would do. Those are called exponents. Um, these are subscripts, I believe. So... Yeah, when you see those, you know that most of the time we're talking about molecules. Oops, I went too fast. Oh, no. Let me go back. Just one. Okay. Melting point. To move my head again. Coming up here. Okay. So melting point is basically when the substance starts to melt. Simple as that. Um, when we... We're going to use something a little bit different... We're, or I'm sorry, we're always going to use Celsius is what I'm trying to say. Because again, we're using the metric system because we are in science class and that's what we use in science. So um, for us, the melting point is going to start at zero degrees um, Celsius. And then if we we're talking about Fahrenheit, it's 32. And it gets a little confusing um, because when we talk about freezing point, it's the same thing. It just depends how, um, if it was colder before or hotter before. So we're going to go back to boiling point because we need to talk about that. Okay, so the boiling point is when a substance starts to boil. Makes sense, right? No, you know, not rocket science there. Um, for the metric system in Celsius, you have to have it 100 degree water for it to boil. Wow, that sounds a lot simpler than 212. So let's look at those numbers one more time. Our melting point, water, zero degrees we remember that or 32. what is easier to remember zero or 32. i'm gonna say zero then we go to boiling point what is easier to remember 
A hundred or two hundred and twelve? This is why we use the metric system, because it's a little bit easier to remember. All right, freezing point. Basically, when something starts freezing, the substance starts freezing, um, like I said, it's the same as the melting point. Keep going. Okay, now this is where we're going to talk. This is, you need to know these things. That's what I'm going to say. Um, mixture. So a mixture is a physical combination of substances, but it can, it can be taken apart. So in a mixture, I've shown you this really cool cup of trail mix, which is making me a little bit hungry. I haven't eaten dinner yet. I'm not going to lie. I love some M&Ms, raisins, and peanuts, but you know, I'll have to wait. Anywho, you could separate all those things. So you could remove the peanuts, you could remove the raisins, you could remove the candy, and you could eat them separately. So a mixture is something that can be physically separated. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because then we can move on to something like salt water. Can, is salt water considered a mixture? Think about it. Can you separate the salt from the water? Give me a second. Okay. Yes, you can. The way you do that is you use, um, basically you boil it off. So you get the water to evaporate. Once you do that, you will have the salt left over. So you'll be able to see the salt at the bottom of the container once all the rest of the water has left. So technically, yes, you can separate that. So salt water would be considered a mixture. Okay, um, next we're going to talk about physical and chemical change. A physical change basically will change the form of the material, but it won't change what it is. So as you can see, I have a glass down here. If you break a glass, it's still glass. So if the physical change is just the glass. You could do something like if I am outside and I'm cutting down branches. When I cut the branches, they're still branches. If I, for instance, take this sticky note that I just used and I crumble it up, it's still the same material. There hasn't been a change, okay? So basically, if I tear the tear the paper, the same deal. Tear it, it's still paper. It has not changed into something else. Um, when we go talk about chemical change, however, oh no, you can't see those delicious cookies. See, I think this slideshow is just... I don't know. It's just to make me hungry, I guess. Anyway, so chemical change is when basically something occurs and a new substance is created. Okay. So if you burn the paper, it's not paper anymore. It's something else. Um, the atoms are actually linking together in different ways. And so it's a whole different substance. The same is true with baking. So if you're cooking um, and you make cookies, when they go into the oven, it is turning into something else. Uh, one way to know that it's a chemical change versus a physical change is the chemical change often will have heat. Um, it can also have a smell. So when you think of fire or you think of making cookies, both of those things have a scent to them. And so you can think of that and remember chemical change. So basically a physical change is it's still the same thing. You just crumble up a piece of paper. That is your physical change. The chemical change, it's not the same thing anymore. That paper, as you can see, that is on fire. Whoo, crazy picture. Is not paper anymore. It is turned into something else. Okay. That makes sense. I hope so. If it doesn't, email me. Let me know. I'll find new, fun, creative ways to explain it to you. Because, you know, that's what I do. All right. Well, guys, that's it. That's the end of your slideshow. You have finished taking notes or you have finished listening to me lecture. So you're done with science for today. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I shall see you later. Bye. Oh, I almost did something wrong. Now, bye. <laughs>